Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is a day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Morning Inspiration. Before we go any further, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another day. Thank you for another opportunity. Father God, I ask that you open up our understanding, compel those who do not have a relationship with you to choose this day to say, I, I'm sorry, forgive me. I want to start a relationship with you. Heavenly Father, I ask that you forgive me of all my sin and help me to present your word in the right way, the way that you want it presented, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Good morning, Evangelist Thomas. Thank you for watching. So today, I just want to stir up your pure minds. We want to talk a little bit from the book of 1 Thessalonians. And we'll be starting, at, it'll be the fifth chapter, First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. And let's look at, um, we'll start verse 8 through 11. The fifth chapter, verses 8 through 11. And what I'll do is I'll mark it because sometimes I jump a little too far. So I'm trying to stay within, you know, I'm trying to stay a little more focused in 2021. Okay, so here we go. Let's see what this says. And then we'll put a title on this after we read this. It says, Let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. So, let's stop and park on this one for a minute. So, we know about the whole armor of God. We know that we read that in an earlier book, a book that came before this, and that's what I mean by earlier. Um where it talks about put on the whole armor of God and it gets into the breastplate, you know, which protects your heart, which protects you from fatal blows of the enemy. Okay, we know that when you put on a helmet, that stops you from, you know, being hit or, you know, getting a concussion or receiving a deadly blow from the enemy as well. So right here it's saying, let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love so we got faith and love on our breastplate. That's what's protecting us. The faith, faith in Jesus Christ, the love of Jesus. And then it says for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Okay? So we have faith. And by having faith, we have love. We, we experience the love of Jesus Christ. And we have the hope of salvation. That means that when we shut our eyes, that's not it. And when I'm saying shutting our eyes, I'm not talking about taking a nap. I'm saying when we breathe our last, last breath on this side of life, when our heart beats for the last time, that's not it. So we have hope, unlike a lot of other people, because some people live and they just say, well, this is all there is. So I haven't accomplished what I really felt I should accomplish, and this is all there is. But I'm here today. God bless you, Sister Hemphill. I'm here today to encourage you and to let you know that there's more than just what we see right now, okay? God bless you, mother-in-law. So I'm here to encourage you today to let you know there's more than what you just see. And guess what? We don't always get it right. And it's time for us to stop acting so like we're all that and they say in a bag of chips. We don't always get it right. I don't always get it right. You don't always get it right. But that's not an excuse to keep getting it wrong. We are to do like the Apostle Paul said, press towards the mark. That means every day I'm giving it all I have. <clears throat> Sometimes I feel like I don't have any more. That's where you dig down and you give it a little more. I, when I was smaller, in other words, when I didn't have all this weight on me, I ran cross country. And that kind of lines up with what we're talking about today. So it was a race. But it wasn't just a sprint which is, you know, the race that everybody likes to see, the 100 meter or the 200 meter, which is a race for people who are very fast. I was not extremely fast like that. But cross country was a three and a half mile race. Uh, well, it was a race, but it was more like an endurance thing. So the goal was to try to do it in under 20 minutes. And if any of you have walked, try walking three miles. Then go out and run and try to run three miles in under 20 minutes. That's not an easy thing to do, okay? So, but what happened is when we were out there running, there were runners who were, were a little more gifted, a little more experienced that would finish before us. 
and they would be at the line cheering for you to finish because how it worked is every team got so many points by whoever came in so if I finish before you I'm cheering because I want you to come in where my team will get more points where we win okay just like salvation just like this Christian walk that's what we're supposed to do we're supposed to encourage we're supposed to love on each other we don't always get it right sometimes we have attitudes sometimes we say things sometimes the things that we say are hurtful sometimes the stuff that we do is misinterpreted okay but what we have to do is we have to continue to press towards the mark we have to continue to try to love on each other so that being said let's dig back in here so we just talked about we're putting on the breastplate of faith and love okay so that's what we're putting on we're putting on faith and love okay and then the helmet of hope and salvation okay so let's go a little further for God has not appointed us to wrath oh we don't have to always go around wanting to argue wanting to fight that's not what God has given us that's not our that's not the spirit we should embrace that's the spirit of Cain okay where you always angry look at what he did to his brother there's only two people at that time two siblings Cain and Abel and you couldn't even get along it's just two of you okay two people in this big old world and you can't get along okay we do not have the spirit of wrath it says for God has not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ we know that one of our favorite verses one of the verses we learned as a child and we can still quote it today John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever I love the word whosoever because that takes out all racism I don't care who tries oh well this this group says well the Bible was written for 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 the white man or it's by white people no 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 because the word whosoever lets us know that there's no racism right there that means whosoever okay for God so loved the world he loved the fallen world he saw how it fell he knew what it was supposed to be and he so loved the world that he was moved to do something. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever, that's anybody, rich, poor, tall, short, doesn't matter about your complexion, doesn't matter whether you can grow some hair or not, whosoever, young, old, doesn't matter if you got a degree or if you got 15 degrees, whosoever, doesn't matter if you have a lot of money in your, in your bank account or if you have no money, whosoever, okay whosoever doesn't matter what part of the country you come from if you're from the north or south doesn't matter whosoever east or west whosoever okay believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life okay so let's keep going and it says for it says in verse 9 for God hath not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even also as ye do. Let's, let's park right there. And if I had to use a title today, it would be encourage each other. Okay, we talk about having love for, for sinners and, and people who have, and when we say sinners, we're not saying that to just say, oh, you're just sinner and all that. No. What that means is, guess what? You have not come into a relationship with Christ Jesus. You don't want to do any better because that's all you know. And you think that's all there is. But there's so much more. And we who are of the household of faith, we should love on each other as well. Because sometimes we're so busy saying, well, I got to go out and win lost souls. Yes, you do. But there are people who are souls as well that are in the body of Christ. Who hurt too and we should sit there and love on them too okay we need to learn how to love on each other we need to encourage each other when we see somebody who's going wrong like that was a a, 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 a statement by dr. King and it says you know if I can help somebody who's going wrong I'm not gonna say it exactly right because this was something he said 50 53 years ago yeah it's coming up 53 years ago, he says, if I can help somebody who's going wrong, 
basically he said with a word or a song okay in other words if i can help somebody if i can be of encouragement to somebody okay then my living is not in vain it doesn't matter how much money you make it doesn't matter how many titles you get it doesn't matter how many places you've gotten to see it doesn't matter you know how many how many things that you have experienced have you helped somebody that's what it comes down to have you loved on somebody have you loved somebody when it wasn't easy to love them have you loved on a friend when you were trying to be patient and they were impatient have you continued to go above and beyond have you truly loved on somebody have you witnessed to somebody have you shared the gospel with somebody and those who have accepted Christ have you encouraged them to get on out there on the battlefield to put on that breastplate let's look at what it says again let's put on our breastplate of faith and love let's put on our, our helmet of hope and salvation let's suit up and get out there because I like sports but this this is this is a this this can be you know if you're a sports fan too let's suit up let's go out there and let's win let's advance the kingdom of Christ that's what it comes down to it comes down to encouraging each other okay sometimes we get a little discouraged Sometimes we look at where we're at and we get overwhelmed and we say, this wasn't what I imagined myself at when I was, you know, 15 years old or when I was 10 or 11. I thought I was going to do so much more and I've done so little or whatever. You know what? The devil is a lie. You're still on this side of life because you have purpose. Okay? We all have purpose. Okay? Sometimes I wonder, hey, you know, have I really influenced anybody have I really done anything okay but you're still here for a reason okay you're still here for a purpose you still have value you still make up the whosoever and I thank God that I'm part of the whosoever so if I had to have a title today it would be love on each other encourage each other share the gospel put on our breastplate and put on our helmet and let's go to work that's what I would say. The title of the message, the title of the, the thought for today is put on your breastplate of love and faith, put on your helmet with the hope of salvation, and let's go to work. Let's go to work. That's what it comes down to. It's time for us to go to work. Because the Bible tells us the fields are white. In other words, they're ready to be, you know, harvested. Okay, I didn't know a whole lot about you know, agriculture, working in the field. I did, one summer, detossil corn. And anybody who knows what that is, that's not no, that's not an easy job to do. Okay? Detossiling corn is something else. So that's, and when I, when I did that and I thought about that, you know, it, it, the sun would beat down on you and suck energy out of you. And you were so happy at the end of the day. Because you, you, you know, you got to take some rest. But then you knew you had to come back again. So you got up at about 6 o'clock and you were done at about 3, 30, 4 o'clock. That was, that was something else. Okay? And I prayed when I was out there. I said, Lord, if you ever bless me where I don't have to work in conditions like this and I get an air-conditioned job, I will be thankful. And sometimes I, I've forgotten that prayer and I have to remind myself of where God has brought me from. Okay? He's brought me a long way. Okay? I've gotten a chance to do some things through the grace of God that I never thought I would do, okay? I never thought I would be the father of five. I didn't think I would have four girls and one son. I, I didn't think that. I didn't think, you know, I, I never really gave it a whole lot of thought about, you know, grandchildren or anything like that. But, you know, God has truly allowed me to see a lot in 50, almost 53 years, and I'm thankful for that. But... What we have to do is we have to press. We have to try harder in 2021. We went through a lot in 2020. And here we are in 2021. Let's press. Let's do more. Let's love more. Let's love harder. Let's be more understanding. Let's encourage more. Okay? That's what we want to try to do in 2021. And before, before we go any further, 
let's do the prayer of salvation. Because we can all be virtual evangelists. We can all be virtual missionaries. We can all share this. And when we do this prayer, and this is a prayer that I'm borrowing from a presentation by um, Dr. Arlinda Thompson. And I don't care if she's not finished yet. She's getting ready to get that doctorate. So I'm speaking those things as though they are. This is the president of our evangelism department for Southwest Michigan Agape. And she's been very <clears throat> encouraging to me and my ministry, my life. And I'm sure she's encouraged others. But this was a prayer that I'm borrowing from her presentation. So I'm, I'm looking down so that way I don't miss anything because this is very good. And we should share this. And this is a, this is a very good prayer. <clears throat> mm, this is a very good prayer for, you know, winning others to Christ. And so this is all we say. We say, Dear Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner. I've done many things that don't please you. I've lived my life for myself only. I'm sorry and I repent. In other words, I'm asking for forgiveness. I ask you to forgive me. I believe that you died on the cross for me to save me. You did what I could not do for myself. I come to you now and ask you to take control of my life. I give it to you from this day forward. Help me to live every day for you and in a way that pleases you. I love you, Lord, and thank you that I will spend all eternity with you. Amen. And we look at that prayer, and that prayer lines right up with Romans, the 10th chapter, verses 8 through 10. Because it says, you know, what saith it? The word is nigh. The word of faith. We've talked about faith. We've talked about belief. We've talked about hope. That goes hand in hand with faith. Okay? And it says that if you, it says thou, if you confess, but guess what? You got to confess. You don't just do it in your mind. You have to confess with your mouth that God sent his son Jesus and raised him from the dead. If you confess this and you believe in your heart, it says you are saved. God bless you, Sister Tyler. If you confess this and believe this, you're saved. Okay? And that's that's what it comes down to. So let us pray. We'll say we'll say a closing prayer, and then I want you to try to really let this just saturate in your spirit. Try to love on somebody a little more. Love on somebody who's in the body of Christ, and try to love on somebody who's out of the body of Christ. Because the Bible tells us with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Now, if I come up to you and I got a smile on my face, I'm like, how you doing? First of all, you think, what do you want? You're probably some salesperson. But if you find out the person just wanted to say hi and wanted to encourage you, that makes you feel good. Sometimes it makes you feel good when somebody texts you or gives you a call and says, you were just on my mind. That means, guess what? You matter. And we all matter. Okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. Father God, I pray that you stir up our pure minds. I pray that you let us share this message with those who have not decided to have a relationship with you yet. I, I pray that you compel them, Father, to have a relationship with you, that you draw them to you, Father. Lord, I pray for those who are suffering during this time of pandemic. Father God, I pray for those who are suffering with COVID, that they have a rapid recovery. I pray, Father God, that you comfort those who have lost loved ones. Release your peace, Father God, that passes all understanding. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. And now, if you said that prayer, if you said one of the two, if you said the prayer of salvation that I read earlier, or you just prayed with us and said it, you know, you had multiple times. If you did that, then you're saved. It's not that you have to go to church. You can go, you can get saved in a church, but you can get saved right where you're at. You can get saved in your living room, your family room, at the kitchen table, wherever you're watching this, okay? And that's what I want to let you know. And when you get saved, I need you to do three more things. Number one, I need you to read your Bible. Yes, read the Bible. Because you're entering a relationship. And when you read this Bible, this Bible should have some writing in it. It should be a little raggedy. You know, it should have, you know, you should use this Bible. It shouldn't have dust on it because it should be it should be used. And the Bible that I recommend right here, Life Application Study Bible, the King James Version, it opens up a lot of stuff. It has some outlines at the beginning. It has a lot of things that will help you. So number one, I need you to read your Bible. Number two, I want you to find a Bible-believing and a Bible-teaching church. 
and I'm going to rattle off some. I'm not going to get all of them. So if your church isn't on there, don't say, oh, I, you know what, I'm not tuning in anymore because he didn't, he didn't say my church. If you want me to say your church, please send me your church's name, and I'll read it off on here, okay? As long as it's a Bible-believing, a Bible-teaching church, I'm not, you know, I'm not reading out some other stuff, but if it falls under that, I will read it out. So here's a couple examples. So I said a Bible-believing and a Bible-teaching church. Pentecostal Temple Church of God in Christ. The pastor is Pastor Kellen Brooks. That's located in Inkster, Michigan. That is a church that I am a member of. Okay? Holy Trinity Temple of Deliverance. Uh, church of God in Christ in River Rouge. The pastor is uh, Michael Miles. Everlasting Word Church of God in Christ, which is located in St. Clair Shores. The pastor is Wade K. Smith. New Christ Temple Church of God in Christ, which is located in Detroit. The pastor is Superintendent Loris Upshaw, Jr. Dunamis Institutional Church of God in Christ, which is located in Ypsilanti. The pastor is Kenneth Walls III. Um, Greater Shiloh Church of God in Christ, which is located in Ypsilanti, Michigan. The pastor is Bishop Dwight Walls. Okay, then we have, um, we have Spirit of Praise, which is located in Ecorse, Michigan. And the pastor is Samuel White. Okay, those are just a few examples, and I jumped around a little, but that gave you a pretty good feeling of some Bible-believing churches, and I believe the ones that I rattle off all do virtual services. So guess what? You can tune in, and you can see if you like the, the message, if you kind of like the feel. You can pray about it, and you can, you can join a couple of the churches that I mentioned. And some of the ones that I didn't mention, hey, if you submit your stuff, I'll be more than happy to read it. So that's one, read your Bible. Two, Bible believing in a Bible teaching church. And three, what is a relationship without communication? Prayer is that. When we pray, we're communing, we're communicating with God. That's what it is. And we're not complaining, but we're communicating. So if it's something that you're you're struggling with, it's something that you, you you're, you're having some problems with, it's like, hey, maybe you're fighting with depression, maybe you're fighting with some anger. Just say, Lord, look, you said I could always come to you. And here I am, Father. It's just like, you know, when, how do you feel as a parent when your child comes to you and says, I'm having some real problems on this and I need your help. Before you've had to, you know, talk to them, before you've had to discipline them, they come to you and they initiate, I'm having some problems with this. You might have saw it, you might not have saw it, but I'm, I'm having some problems. Help me. As a parent, you're excited that you get to, you know, jump into action. God is the same way. He gets excited when we want to talk to him. He gets excited when we talk to him about what we're going through, how we're feeling, what, how we see it. God gets excited about that. And he's available to us. Okay? And that's all I got. And as I always like to say, God loves you, and so do I. You be blessed.